Mixing with Mike Mixing Tip, printing your final mix and stems. Um, in all of the work that you do to create your final mix, um, at the end, you got to bounce it out. And uh, so there's some things to consider when you're bouncing out and creating your final mix stems and uh, putting things together. You really want to make sure that you have together and, and lined up so that uh, when you finish the final product, you're not going back and having to redo all kinds of things. So here are some of the basic considerations and an historical perspective. And I want to clear up what I call a stem because stems are a word that seems to mean a lot of things out there. Some people will say, hey, I need the multi-track stems, which means that what they want are the processed versions of individual tracks. And then there are the real stems or what were always called stems. And those were uh, stereo mixes that were bounced out mostly for movie production. So the the typical layout of that would be drums and percussion with effects in a stereo mix. Um, and then you would have a mix that would be all the instrumentation, musical instrumentation with effects. You'd have a mix that would be the lead vocal with effects. And then you'd have a mix that would be background vocals with effects. And out of those four stereo mixes, without a master fade out and without mix bus processing, what you would have would be your final mix that would be in a stem fashion that would be used and, and used in movies. And so whenever I dealt with printing stems, it wasn't about having the ability necessarily to create different mixes. That, that was a byproduct of it that was actually really cool um, or a side uh, byproduct of the work but not the primary focus. So if the song was specifically for a movie, and I worked on a lot of projects where um, I mixed songs that were specifically for a movie release, and what they would do in the movie is they would take and they would take the individual stems and they may use only the rhythm track or just the drums and percussion, um, um, what they would call like a percapella track. And they may use that for a certain section of the song, or they may use the acapella vocals for another section of the song, or they may use the full mix for another element part of the song. And so what you do is you give them the ability to use those elements in different things. Now, where that benefits the artist is the artist usually gets paid by the amount of time that their music plays within the song. And the, the highest paying ones are the one, the song that starts the movie, the first song that starts the movie, and the first song that starts the credits where the credits begin right at the very end of the movie. Those are the two highest paying tracks because those are the ones where people are most attentive. As you get into the story of, of the, you know, of the movie itself, you're more engulfed in the story and what's going on and, you know, and all the drama and all of that than you are on the song that's playing on the radio. So for me, what was always funny was after working on a song, for hours and hours and hours, tracking it, overdubbing it, mixing it, submitting all the stems, uh, I would go to the movie and then I would be listening for where those stems were being used and how they were being used. It always fascinated me, you know, that, you know, maybe some mix that I worked on ends up being part of like some drug dealer scene, you know, where it's playing in a car, but the windows are closed and you hear it, you know, you know, you hear the song playing when the when the camera's inside the car, but when it goes outside the car, you only hear like the thumping of the low end, you know, <laughs> of it. And and they actually use all of that stuff. And then it's like, you know, then the guy rolls down the window and you hear the music blaring. They throw in a bag of cash or dope or whatever, and then the car takes off, you know. And sometimes I've done songs and it ends up being like on some radio, like a little AM radio playing like three rooms away, you know, just sort of echoing into the room where the two actors are or the actor is. And so it's amazing to kind of see how these elements and these things get used in movies. Sometimes they're they're more um, uh, um, prominent, sometimes not. Now, in in the process of bouncing, there there are a couple of tools that I like to use. One is uh, one of the cool features of Pro Tools is setting up um, a um, uh, it's actually a memory location type of thing, but it actually is is just a selection area, so I can create a selection area. Now, when I bounce out my mix, uh, it's typical I'm going to bounce uh, with a, a little bit of space at the beginning before the first element of the mix starts, and then after the end of the fade out, if that's where it is. Um, it's also typical sometimes with stems if you have a fade out type of a song. So this is after the end of the music, and it's just a fade out, so that's fine. But if you actually have a fade song, it's typical that you print the stems without the fade and without bus processing. So as we bounce out the mix, 
Um, a couple of the recommendations that I make is if you're bouncing out, um, you know, let's just say that we're bouncing out the drums and percussion. So when I'm bouncing it out, I want to listen to it beginning to end. Uh, part of the reason for this is that in the process of laying out um, all of the individual tracks, so the way that I process it, so let's say I have um, a drums and percussion. So these are all my, you know, kick, claps, and clips, and hi-hats, and bongos, and congas, and all that sort of stuff, and toms. All of these things are fed into um, are fed into buses three and four as it goes across, and that's my stem. Uh, I can name it. I just don't name it. And all the effects that go along with the drums here in gray tracks are also bust out to three and four. Now, when I bounce it, sometimes it's very easy to leave an effect return or a new track that you import into going directly to the stereo mix bus. So when you bounce that stem, you know, ideally, if you mute all of your stems and the stems here are in the darker and lighter blue tracks. So what I have is a parallel, uh, a bass stem, uh, because this is a, a house track. I have a, a drum and percussion uh, with a parallel track, keys with a parallel track, effects with a parallel track, and vocals with a parallel track. So as I create individual mixes, if I were to just play this down from the beginning, I should not hear any audio at all because they're all muted. And, and so that's basically the way that I want to lay it out. So, um, I also bypass any uh, forms of processing. So I have a, a meter here, but that's just, you know, not showing anything. So if I laid out my, you know, my uh, mix here with the drums and the percussion, that's going to show that. But I have no mix bus processing either. Okay. And the reason is that um, in bouncing this out, what happens is the drum and percussion um, end up driving typically most of the compression movement on the stereo bus channel. So when you print the bass, that pumping movement is not there. The idea is that if you wanted to create, recreate the final mix exactly as it is, you would lay out the stereo stems and then put in the final mix. Uh, you could have the fade out if that's included. Have your mix bus processing here, and then those uh, stereo audio files would be pre fader so or pre master processing, master bus processing, and that way you could then change that if you needed to. Uh, it gives you the ability after to have the stems to do vocal up versions, vocal down versions, etc. Uh, print external, you know, other types of mixes like TV mixes where there's no lead vocals but everything else, uh, allowing the performer to say perform at some event or on a radio show where they sing live but the rest of the music is is just uh, playing back, you know, where they can't have a band or a group there or something like that, um, and. And then just bounce it out like that. So as you go through each of the bounces, they'll show up here. So right here I have, you know, just uh, these guys. So this is identical to, this is just the bass and the drum and percussion stem. So this is not finished being bounced out. Now it's typical that in the process of the bounce, I'll listen to it beginning to end. And I'll typically print out the stems prior to bouncing out the final mix. Now. Um, when I say this, what I mean is that the final master mix. So in printing a final mix, it will be submitted to the client until the approval of the final mix. Like they're just like, hey, we're 100 percent. We're completely happy. Go ahead, print out all the final stems and, and different versions. Now I go back to the stems and I print them out. This makes sure that there's nothing and I listen to it down, that there's nothing sort of extra in there that doesn't belong there. Some edit that I missed, some effect that didn't, you know, like. Um, trigger the way it was supposed to and I'll hear it it'll come through more clearly if it's part of the keyboards than in the complete mix so um, you want that to be as clean as possible same type of thing like it makes sure like when you do the acapella versions of your vocals that there is not environmental noise or noises in the background like you have to really make sure all your edits and things are clean because these things acapella versions and stuff like that they get used and if they're noisy and they got problems, then that becomes harder to extract or affect. And then it compromises, perhaps maybe somebody listens to that and say, I love this, I'd love to use it, but there's too much noise here, I can't deal with it, or there's bleed in here. So you gotta get rid of those types of things. Make all your individual bounces out as you go along, and then you can just stack them up, run that into the mix bus, um, and, and then that gives you the ability to at any point to kind of change it. It also, depending upon the style of mix and what it is that you're creating, it gives you the ability to kind of multi-market what, what it is that you're doing. So when you have the stems, you have a final mix, um, which may be an instrumental, right? So you have a final instrumental mix, um, 
and maybe that's something that you sell to other people to rap over or or um, record new songs over so you could sell it to them that way but if you bounce out the stereo stems without the master processing now they can take those individual tracks and that gives them the ability to change the balance of the bass versus the drums versus the keyboards versus uh, whatever other elements that you separate out it allows them to grab samples of the vocals and uh, take them, you know, put them in and trigger them in different ways or process them in different ways in exclusion of what you have going on here. Um, and then you can print out, you know, the final um, processed files for individual tracks if they wanted the multi-track stems. All of these things are, are things that you have to consider. You want to have this finished and wrapped up and laid out because it archives everything as well. Um, when you have plugins and software sense and all of these types of things, you have to also consider the fact that over time, some of these things are going to get let go. Manufacturers stop, you know, um, uh, upgrading, or maybe the company goes out of business. Maybe they stop uh, supporting a particular product because it's not selling anymore. Um, and so you move up an operating system. All of a sudden, somebody says, hey, can you call up that mix? You load it up, and there's all these plugins that aren't working that you had. And so unless you're going to keep an archive of full computers with those operating systems from each you know, mix, then it ends up being crazy in the end. So those printouts of that stuff becomes really important from an archival purpose uh, perspective. And now there are new tools uh, almost every application has some kind of way to bounce, bounce tracks out offline, include automation, no automation, etc. cetera. Um, and when you bounce it out with all these variations, it's a real time saver. It used to be that these things had to be bounced out one at a time. Now you can freeze them, uh, bounce them, consolidate them, and all the different variations um, that make it so that you can kind of put a mix, you know, fully back together. Anyway, that's... Um, some ideas and things to consider when you print out your final mix. You never want to be left uh, in a situation where um, uh, somebody is asking for something and you can't make it quickly available. Very important when you finalize it. Get all that stuff there when someone says, hey, do you got this? Boom. You know, send them a zip file um, or a compressed file and, uh, and they got it. And that way you can kind of get your work out there. Uh, so it's making money for you because that's the whole idea. All right, this is a Mixing with Mike Mixing Tip, printing your final mixes and stems.